What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So, we've got the FOMC meeting in less than 10 hours at 1.30pm Eastern. I will be live to cover the entire event. 2pm Eastern is when the actual statement and the summary of economic projections will be released. We're going to do our analysis for 30 minutes from 2 to 2.30. And 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern is when press conference will take place from Jerome Powell. And uh, that, of course, is going to be very, very important in a market-moving event um, today because all eyes are on the Fed. This is it. This is really what dictates monetary policy. This is what dictates interest rates. And this is not only a big day for the U.S., but for the world as well because the U.S. is the biggest GDP in the world and monetary policy in the U.S. with interest rates affects every single monetary policy decision in other central banks all over the world. So hope you all enjoy this video. I'm going to break down exactly what we need to look forward to. I'm going to break down some bank expectations for interest rates and cuts, what the market's pricing in, what the Federal Reserve's penciled in, and how the markets might react going into the statement, the SCP, and the press conference as well. Make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. Definitely do join and take advantage of that. I've opened up a couple more spots for the month of December, if you want to join, of course, be a part of our MoneyVest community. You get access to all the members-only videos, Excel spreadsheets, and the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas. Everything's going to be included with the link down below. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. and I'm happy to help moving forward. So, first of all, this is it. Like I said, today, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, Chairman Jerome Powell will host a live FOMC press conference. And uh, a lot of things come out at 2 p.m. Eastern, including the statement and the summary of economic projections. So if you come over to the meeting over here, December 13th is when the actual meeting is. So that's today. The meeting got started yesterday, but today is the press conference and the statement. And the asterisk basically represents a summary of economic projections will also be released. And like I said, I will be live at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. So definitely do tune in for the press conference for Jerome Powell and for FOMC as well. If you go over to the last projection materials, right? So this is where the last SEP was released back in September we did see significant changes from the prior uh, June projections as well. I'm going to actually come back to this. I want to quickly go over what the banks actually feel, what the Federal Reserve is going to do first. And this right here is what my expectation looks like going into today. So when it comes to the actual rate decision itself, we already know the market's pricing in no hike. In other words, a pause. And there was over a 98% probability that the Federal Reserve is not going to raise rates. So if you come over to the FedWatch tool, you already know that there's over a 98% probability that the Federal Reserve is not going to change rates at all. Um, so you can see 98.4%. And we're going to stay steady at where we are, 5.25 to 5.5%. And we're going to stay there until March of 2024. And then five rate cuts will happen in 2024. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way through December of next year, coming down to four, 4.25%. So when it comes to the rate decision, in my opinion, that is going to be a very neutral expected move from the Federal Reserve to keep interest rates steady with over a 98% probability. And when it comes to the guidance into 2024, and this is really what's going to be a market moving event, it's all going to come down to the guidance from the Federal Reserve uh, in their summary of economic projections. So if you notice what we have seen from the previous projection, we noticed that interest rates over here, the federal funds rate, uh, they expected interest rates to be as high as 5.6% in 2023. This is the last meeting of the year. So if they don't raise interest rates by 25 basis points in today's meeting, well, guess what? We're going to end the year at 525 to 5.5%. The Federal Reserve penciled in for rates to increase by one more hike 25 basis points and for us to end up in here 5.5 to 5.75 percent that's exactly what 5.6 percent represents it's in the middle of that higher range but since the market's not pricing that in and you know honestly of course inflation's been trending lower there's a possibility that the federal reserve obviously there's a very high possibility and a probability the federal reserve doesn't do anything this meeting and we keep rates steady unchanged and go ahead with the pause and, and keep them as low as 5.5 percent now, going into next year, the Federal Reserve was pricing in two rate cuts. In other words, 50 basis point cuts, 25 and 25. The timing of the rate cuts is still unknown and unclear. So we don't know exactly uh, what that's going to look like. But you'll notice that the reason why the last FOMC was actually bearish 
for the market was because we saw fewer rate cuts going into 2024. And that was actually one of the reasons why the markets sold off in the first place. If you remember from our last FOMC in the June summary of economic projections, actually the September meeting, not the October meeting, but the September meeting, if you go back, the markets were down, right? And September seasonality was also a pretty big deal because September usually is one of the worst months for the market. But the reason why the market sold off more aggressively is because we talked about this. And I mentioned that if the SCP shows fewer cuts, right? Not only more hikes, but fewer cuts is another bearish catalyst for the market. And that's exactly what we saw because in the June projections, we saw 5.6 coming down to 4.6. That's over a hundred basis points worth of cuts. In other words, four rate cuts originally that the Federal Reserve penciled in in June. And that number changed to 5.1%, meaning fewer cuts, two fewer cuts is what the Federal Reserve was penciling in. So going into today's summary of economic projections, the bearish outlook will happen if 2024, the Federal Reserve pencils in maybe one more rate hike, uh, one or more rate hike or less than two rate cuts is the only way this is going to be bearish from a summary of economic projections in my opinion. So in other words, the summary of economic projections comes out at 2 p.m. If the guidance for 2024 shows us one or more rate hikes or less than two cuts, that will be unexpected and that will, in as a result, could be bearish for the market. The other scenarios, in my opinion, are bullish. So we are very, very biased towards the bullish scenarios because those are more expected scenarios. And the market's pricing in four rate cuts. And if the Federal Reserve comes around the idea that the economy is strong and inflation is indeed trending down and, and, and we could cut rates to as much as three or more times, this should really be three or more rate cuts. That would be unexpected. The reason why I say unexpected, and that is because even though the market's pricing that in, the Federal Reserve is not. And that's the discrepancy that I want you guys to understand. The market's baking in four rate cuts or five rate cuts, I should say. But the Federal Reserve is not. The Federal Reserve is only pricing in two. So three or more rate cuts penciled into the summary of economic projections, and that could actually be bullish for the market because now the Federal Reserve would be in line with market's expectations for rate cuts. You understand what I'm saying? Hopefully that makes sense because it is, it is really a game the Federal Reserve is playing right now, and it's kind of suppressing market's expectations. They're talking tough. They want to make sure the market doesn't get ahead of itself in believing that the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates when indeed they are not planning to. So the Federal Reserve indeed comes around the idea of rate cuts and, and kind of inlines, uh, aligns itself with the market, that is actually gonna be bullish. But if the Federal Reserve continues to believe that, okay, maybe one more rate hike is possible in 2024 or fewer than two rate cuts are possible, considering how strong the economy is, considering how good the unemployment numbers are, we can maybe hike one more time in 24 or cut fewer than two times in 24. Well, that's not going to fly or be well received by the market. And that indeed could be bearish going into this meeting. So got to keep that in mind. The summary of economic projections really is going to hold all the cards for us. And it's going to tell us how the markets are going to react today. This right here is from all the banks. And this is from the least to most aggressive um, interest rate cutting sort of plan. And you'll notice that Barclays right now believes that cuts will begin in December 24. Uh, Credit Agricole believes July of 24. Goldman Sachs believes third quarter 24. Uh, then we've got RoboBank, uh, June 24. B of A, June 24. May 24 from BNB Paribas. City is July 24, mid 2024. So a lot of banks actually believe that in the second half of 2024, so we can just kind of sum it up at second half of 2024 is when a lot of the banks believe the Federal Reserve is going to start cutting interest rates, even UNI Credit, June 24, Deutsche Bank, June 24, Wells Fargo, second quarter of 24 as well. And there's, of course, a variety of rate outlooks. Um, if you take a look at the median, the median of medians, uh, the banks are pricing in 225 to 250 basis points worth of cuts through 2024 and 2025. So not just next year, but going into 2025, uh, they're expecting significant amount of cuts from the Federal Reserve. But the idea, once again, we have to understand, so 2024, the bank's median is 4.9%, uh, which again, if you do the math, is gonna be a little bit lower uh, than what the Federal Reserve's penciled in. Penciled in 5.1, uh, banks are expecting 4.9. So basically those are three rate cuts in 24, 
uh, and then another significant amount of cuts. We're looking at maybe uh, five rate cuts in 2024 to bring down from 4.9 to 3.6%. And then 2026, another three rate cuts to bring down to 2.9%. So this is the progression for all the banks and what they are pricing in. Uh, but one thing I will mention again is the Federal Reserve needs a reason. They need an incentive to cut rates. And there are four potential reasons why they could cut rates. There could be recession, there could be deflation, there could be an actual economic crisis, and there could be political pressure. One of these four things or combination of these four things is really what's going to help the Federal Reserve justify cutting interest rates. They're not going to cut interest rates just for the sake of cutting interest rates, right? Just because they wake up one day and be like, okay, let's just go ahead and cut interest rates. Inflation, either inflation needs to come down to the Fed's target and even lower than the Fed's target. There needs to be some level of economic weakness, i.e. a recession or some type of a crisis that they are trying to solve and, and fix or some type of political pressure. One of these four things or a combination of four things is important for the Federal Reserve to justify cutting interest rates. They need to fix something, right? Whenever they change policy, they do it with purpose, right? They change policy with purpose. They change policy with an intention to solve something. Why are they raising interest rates right now? They're doing it to fight inflation. Why did they cut interest rates the last time? They did it to support the economy in the midst of COVID and the pandemic. So they will cut interest rates to fix something with purpose, with intention. And that incentive right now is not there. The economy is strong. Inflation still above the target. There's no economic crisis. Maybe one is brewing under the, under the layers. We don't know. We'll find out. And maybe there's political pressure that kicks in in 2024 because it's going to be a political year. But the bottom line is right now there is no incentive. There's no reason for the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. So outlook is going to be very, very important in the summary economic projections going into today's meeting. So hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, found it helpful. Just wanted to go over uh, my expectations and some of the reasons, um, you know, required for the Federal Reserve to consider cutting rates. But the summary economic projections and the guidance going into 2024 is going to be very, very important from the Federal Reserve. So keep that in mind. Hope you all are ready. I will be live to cover these numbers and cover the press conference. So make sure to tune in at 1.30 p.m. Eastern for our live stream. Make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel and link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. Definitely do check it out. Check it out and join us um, with the link down below. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.